So China's got their sodium ion batteries on the way. They have left the lab. They are on the way to the manufacturing facilities. The manufacturing facilities are being built. And while they're not in any serious cars yet today, there is an awful lot of awfully good news about it that I'd love to share. I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. <laughs> So there's this great story we just got from uh, Car News China. Sodium ion batteries are real. In China, BYD to build a 30 gigawatt hour sodium battery plant. Sounds good. BYD signed a 1.4 billion US dollar uh, contract for a new battery plant in Shouzhou, a city about halfway between Beijing and Shanghai. So here's Shouzhou and here's Beijing and here's Shanghai. Yeah, that's about halfway. Uh, good math. Yeah, I like it. Uh, it will make uh, annual output of 30 gigawatt hours. And how much is that? Is that a lot? <clears throat> Just pulling up 30 gigawatt hours, we see uh, plants in the U.S. BMW's got a plant. Hyundai's got a plant. 30 gigawatt hours appears to be uh, kind of a sweet spot. And some of these are as small as 1.5 million square feet. That's a pretty efficient use of space. It's not like a gigafactory that, uh, well, it was a, a going to be quite big and they managed to make it smaller. Very exciting. So, uh, on November 18th, the, uh, BYD subsidiary Findream, Findreams, Findreams, a, and tricycle giant, uh, signed an agreement to build the factory. And they had their big signing agreement. So that just means trikes. That means e-mobility. That's okay. That's okay. Companies announced they would uh, make uh, Shuzhou the center of battery production for micro vehicles and scooters, as those have the best use for sodium ion battery packs. So, well, wait, if it's only going into those, I thought we needed more lithium ion and LFP batteries. Well, yes, but those can now be used further up the chain. The more battery packs that are used for micromobility, the more that remain available for other purposes. They're going to sell a billion e-bikes. Let's keep those batteries for something where the application needs higher drain. Why not? Then you've got the, uh, for that matter, these could be used in stationary storage where energy density is less critical leaving LFP available for more autos and NMC chemistries, which you think of for like a Tesla long range or performance model available for those applications. The more batteries of the more different chemistries we have, the better it is. This is not the first cooperation deal between BYD uh, and this uh, YHI group, as both companies teamed up to build a standard battery plant couple last year. They jointly invested uh, 10 billion yuan. The 310,000 square meter facility uh, is nearby with trial production set to start in a few months. BYD Seagull, we had heard that it was that sodium ion is already going into cars. BYD Seagull is going to have it. And it didn't. When those shipped, we saw that no, those are in fact the LFP blade batteries from BYD, which would make sense. I don't think they had enough available at scale to do them just yet but they are convinced the technology is mature enough that it will work. Other Chinese manufacturers are also not sleeping. CATL announced in April they'll be the first to use sodium ion in Cherry Auto's iCar brand. So what is the Cherry Auto? It's not this car. It's, it's their car brand. It's their serious car brand. Cherry makes these adorable little neighborhood vehicles. They're fun, but they're not long range. Uh, in February, Chinese uh, battery maker Hina uh, unveiled the first EV with a sodium ion battery. The car powered by Hina was the Seahole E10X. What's that? Adorable. That looks like a real car. And it looks kind of like a, like a Polo, like a, like a Volkswagen Rabbit. Quite compact, uh, but it is a city car. When you look at reviews, they're not quite as glowing as the numbers might look. Made in a joint venture between Volkswagen uh, and J JAC, the sodium pack had a capacity of 25 kilowatt hours and an energy density of 120 watt hours per kilogram. 
in a range of 250 kilometers. That's 150 miles. No, it didn't. That's on the WLTP standard. Real world testing said they're more like 93 miles, but okay. 120 watt hours per kilogram. Is that good? LFP, if we look at it here, we're seeing 135 from lesser brands, BYD at 141, CATL at 161. 120 is pretty serious. That's decent. And to get 100 miles out of a pack this small, hmm, yeah, that's reasonable. That's reasonable. Uh, the latest Chinese battery manufacturer to announce a sodium plant was with was Jiangsu Zulnasm. Whew, these names are giving me fits today. The company will build a factory with an output of 20 gigawatt hours of sodium cells. So these are these are all good bits of news. Um, with many new battery prototypes, you got to break it down. Uh, these will, thanks to its lower cost and smaller energy density, it'll be installed on cheaper EVs, like entry-level hatchbacks, like we saw, electric scooters and trikes, and sodium batteries mass production will ease pressure on precious metals extraction, as it doesn't need lithium, and it doesn't need, an NMC battery has nickel, manganese and cobalt lfp doesn't have any of those this doesn't even have the lithium sodium will replace it as the cathode material uh, so it doesn't have cobalt yeah it might have nickel or manganese i'm not sure but so to sum up the pros and cons uh, it is generally safer than lithium it is better performance in cold temperatures something like down to negative 40 degrees I don't know if that's Fahrenheit or Celsius, but in either case, it's quite good. <laughs> it's very, very cold. Slower discharge rate. I guess that's good. Cheaper to produce, and that's the big one. And better for the environment because the minerals are even less in conflict. I don't know if you know this, but sodium is widely available. You have some on your table that you could probably refine without too much difficulty with the help of a high school chemistry teacher named Walter. The cons, it does have a slower charge rate. Okay, fair enough. Lower attainable voltage, yes, and lower energy density than LFP, but we're just getting started with this chemistry. It likely has headroom, but even if it doesn't, these can work. The electric motors are still getting more efficient, and for energy storage, for grid-scale storage, it doesn't necessarily need you know, the space is not the limiting factor. You can build these outside of town for grid scale storage. The only downside I'm seeing is, unlike LFP, if we're talking grid scale, is that um, they only have an expected life cycle of 5,000 cycles rather than eight to 10,000 cycles. But 5,000 cycles every day for 10 years is 3,650, four, two, leap days. 300 and 3,652, depending which 10 years. So uh, you're going to get 15 years of one full cycle a day, seven years of two full cycles a day. You're not going to use full cycles on grid scale storage twice a day. So these have plenty of life, just not as much as LFP. And just like lithium ion and lithium, uh, uh, lithium, you know, traditional nickel, metal, cobalt, and nickel, manganese, you get the idea. Just like traditional batteries, these can be recycled. I don't know if they're useful for anything apart from the, just the metal from the cans, but even that is still worth something. Can it replace lithium ion? Uh, not today. Not today and not widely, but it doesn't have to. Um, we're putting, now that we've got LFP up to the levels it's at, we don't have to use the high nickel batteries in stationary storage that frees all of those up for automotive. And now LFP can do stationary like your power walls and your mega packs and other big installations. And LFP can even work in some cars. And if this can get better to the point where it can be used in some cars and take over for stationary storage, then those LFP cells as they improve will be used increasingly for automobiles. This takes a lot of pressure off the supply chain and it's all pretty good and pretty exciting. So that's a lot of fun. I am going to be in Texas next week uh, for the big Cybertruck delivery event. 
come find me. I will be at the Before, During, and After Party, hosted by the Austin Owners Club, and Zach and Jesse from Now You Know, they have invited me to be a speaker, and I will be there. It will be a lot of fun. So come find me. I am not famous enough to be annoyed by, by my cadre of adoring fans or detractors. Uh, tickets appear to be sold out. I don't know if there are actually are tickets in past events. Uh, I've never seen them check tickets or take tickets. It's more to get a handle on how many people are coming. Luster Pearl is a very large venue by bar standards. Uh, and it doesn't look like a bar. It's a beautiful place. So uh, in the comments, what did I miss? What did I misunderstand? For everybody else, stay tuned, stay juicy, and I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots, perhaps in Texas.